I'm joined today by Gordon Dugan, President and CEO of WP Carry Co. Gordon, what's the main lesson that people should take out of the difficult times we've been through? If a company had the wrong capital structure and got over leveraged, um, they can't live to fight another day. And people always wonder why um, some companies survive and some don't. And to me, it really does come down to leverage. With, with leverage being so key, what is, is there a magic number? You know, I think it depends on the, on, on the type of investments you make. I think different investments uh, can handle different levels of leverage. In my own view, um, hotels should have less leverage because of the volatility of, of operating cash flow. Um, net lease, which is our business, can, can afford a little bit higher le level of leverage because um, the cash flows are very steady. There's no capital expenditures uh, required to keep the tenant because you have a 20-year lease with the tenant. Uh, there seems to be consensus that, that there's still more hard times to come in the overall commercial real estate market. What role do you think REITs can play in 2010 and beyond? I think what we're going to find is that the, 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 the people that didn't get in big trouble in this last downturn are going to have capital, they're going to be able to invest, take advantage of opportunities like um, uh, uh, deals that have gone bad that just need to be repriced and need new capital coming in. And so there, the, the, for certain people, there's actually going to be a lot of opportunity going forward. The return of the capital markets for REITs means a return for REITs to be able to provide capital for growth, whether it's uh, you know, building warehouses for companies uh, in growing markets or you know, a variety of different things. So it's, it's, it's terrific. And I imagine that's where the transparency and liquidity that REITs offer also give them another advantage. I think that's right. I think that um, you know, the... the, the, the the way capital flows have come back into the public REIT market has really been a validation of the fact that, um, you know, that it's a great way to access capital. There are investors who will invest as long as, um, uh, you know, there's opportunity. And, um, you know, if, if you told me eight months ago in March that there would be $19 billion of equity raised, there would be IPOs of new REITs, uh, I would have said, not for a while, certainly not by now. I, I, no way could I foresee that, but it shows you that maybe the cycle's a little bit shorter. And we're, we're, we're getting back to normalcy in, in the capital markets for real estate related investments very quickly. Money's willing to flow into a place where there's opportunity. And, and you talked about the equity markets, and, and, and like you said, you know, we've seen that money come in. What about bank lending? We think CMBS will start back up. It'll be done on, on you know, much different on, on much different terms. You know, really prudent terms rather than some of the things that was happening. But uh, CMBS, it will be back. It will be back in different form with different. You know, it'll be 55% loan to value, amortizing. But it should have been in the first place, so that's fine, and that that works okay for our business model. And it's going to work well for other well-capitalized companies. How does your uh, looking at, at, at the sector you operate in specifically? How are things shaping up for for 2010? In our view is that uh, net lease activity fell overall this year. We expect it to pick back up, and we think there's going to be a lot of opportunity ahead with lesser competition. We think the opportunity will come back faster than the new competition will come in. Great. Gordon, thank you very, thank much. You very much. For REIT.com, I'm Matt Beecher. <laughs>